Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. How are you guys doing today? I hope you guys had an amazing weekend. I hope you're having a great beginning of your week. Um, so I'm back. I'm, as you saw by the title, I'm going to be reacting to the Rewired Soul. Um, he posted a video called What Really Happened to Juice World." If you don't know who Juice World is, he was a rapper. Um, he had recently passed away at the age of 21 this past Sunday due to a seizure. Um, I personally was a fan of him or am a fan. I still listen to his music and will continue to. Um, and it did hit me hard when I had found out that he had passed away just because, you know, it's one of those things where it's someone that I I don't look at celebrities like that, but it was someone that I do enjoy their music and then coming to find out how young he was, it just, it hurt my heart. Um, so I was hesitant about watching this video. I'm not going to lie because it's Chris. I mean, come on. I'm not going to front. I'm not going to pretend like it's because, you know, whatever. It's because it's him. And um, it's also because I saw the timing. I saw it was like two hours after the news had broke and I was just kind of like, mm, and then mm, doesn't hit me too well, you know, but since I am a fan um, and I am a mental health worker, I'm hoping maybe we'll see a redeeming moment and he says something that's kind of help helpful, beneficial while I'm watching this video. So before we even get into all of that, if you're new here, hi, welcome. This is Journey to Find K and I'm K and I like to make reaction videos about the rewired soul. I personally am a mental health worker. I work as a case manager out here where I live. Um, I'm a mental health patient. I take my own medications. I have my own diagnoses. I see my own psychiatrist and I'm a huge advocate for all things mental health. I'm not going to lie. I love it. It's something that once you learn more about it, you see it, you, it just opens your eyes to so many things. It opens your heart to so many things as well. So I like reacting to him. Um, if you enjoy my reactions to watching his video, if you want to use me as kind of like your little secret way of catching up on what is he doing if you aren't a fan anymore, hit, some, hit subscribe, you know, hit subscribe. It's okay. I welcome you. I will take this for the team because I personally want to try to contradict any information that might be kind of problematic that he is pushing out while watching his videos. So if that sounds something like you would enjoy, definitely hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so that way you're notified when I post a video. Comment down below, let me know that, hey, new subby, and also let me know how you feel after watching this video. I always like to hear from my subscribers. I like to hear everyone's opinion it's great to have these type of conversations. So let me stop rambling. Let me not make such a long intro. Oh my goodness. Whew. Let's get into this video. Let's get into this video. I also want to say I'm a little bit curious as well. That's why I also wanted to watch to see if he says anything about the whole Prozac stuff. I mean, hello, you sat here and told your subscribers something really problematic. People have talked to you about it. You went off in your comments, but we haven't heard anything. So I want to see if he addresses it too. Um, but if he doesn't, it's totally understandable if he's just trying to give Juice World his, you know, proper respects. It's his own video, you know? So let's get into this. Let's see. I'm anxious. So we just received the very sad news that the 21-year-old rapper Juice World has I passed cried. away after I'm having a seizure I cried. in an airport. 21. And there's a lot of talk just about substance 21. abuse and everything like that. And as a recovering drug addict who's been clean that made me mad for too. seven years, I want to talk some about some things that might I feel like we're pushing drug abuse on people just because we don't understand knows. something. Like, I don't know if it's drug abuse or not. I'm hoping it wasn't, but I hate that people are automatically jumping to it, you know? What's up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, the things that I'm really passionate about are mental health, psychology, drug addiction, and really trying to give people hope that change is possible. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. That and I'm also possible. over on Instagram and Twitter if you want to follow me. Let me, me stop, let me stop, let me stop. Soul. All right, so let's jump into this. Um, those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm a recovering drug addict. I got clean on my 27th birthday, June 23rd, 2012. My drug of choice was prescription opioids so i talk quite a bit about um the prescription drug epidemic and we're going to be talking about xanax quite a bit in this because juice world a couple of his substance of choices were codeine which is a prescription opioid as well as xanax which is a benzodiazepine which is usually used to treat anxiety but it's also abused a lot especially in um the rap community all right but aside from that i also worked at a drug and alcohol treatment 
It's not especially in the rap community. It is with a lot of big celebrities, a lot of big stars. But in all honesty, it's a huge epidemic across this whole entire country. Um, it is something that I've seen my own personal clinic. We will not prescribe anyone benzodiazepines if that's the reason they're trying or that's the type of medication they're trying to get for anxiety. We let them know straight up up front. We've had clients who have left us because they were used to being on uh, Valium or whatever medication they were prescribed prior they're like nope I want to stay on that um, then we've had clients who have understood because they were dealing with those medical concerns so I don't like the generalization of it being predominantly big in the rap game like I don't like that um, so many different reasons why I don't but it's predominant everywhere it's we have an epidemic period in this country <sighs> center for a little over three years we did everything from detox to inpatient to outpatient as well as aftercare so when i saw this news about juice world this morning it's it's already sad enough to see you know a young a young person die especially one who's just hitting their stride and about to you know just be set for the rest of their life you know what i mean um and yeah, so when this happened, whenever I hear of a young person passing away, my mind immediately goes to substance abuse. And this is because I have seen so many people die from substance abuse. Okay? So as of right now, what we know is that Juice World had a seizure in the Chicago airport. When they took him to the hospital, he later died at the hospital as a result of that seizure. So it is not clear what caused that seizure. So yet, let's not guess. But things are leaning toward that bothers me so badly. It's like you want someone to be suffering so bad. You know what I mean? Why can't it be just a seizure? Like, and I'm not just talking about Chris, I'm talking about everybody. I was just sharing this with my sister. I was like, yo, she's like, it was a seizure. And she did quotation marks. I said, and I'm going to let you know, honestly, I really hope it is because I'm so tired of it being put on people. Substance abuse, substance abuse. It's like the first thing that comes out of your mouth. Like, I know there's an epidemic, but not everyone is passing away because of substance abuse. If it happens suddenly, it's not always because of substance abuse. Like, there's a fine line of being understanding. Oh, he says he had no prior medical history of seizures. Mm, that changes stuff. But I still don't want, no, I, I personally still don't believe in putting anything on anyone until the facts come out, until the information comes out, until we hear a talk, like an actual confirmation of, yes, there this is what was the cause of death, which they do for celebrities. You know, I'm not going to sit here and automatically turn to, oh, he was on drugs. That's why he just died like that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not, because there could be other reasons. What if he had an aneurysm and never knew it? You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that drug addiction is something Something that we should be um, ashamed of or afraid of addressing. I'm just saying it shouldn't be the first thing we use to justify someone passing away. It could be many, many things. You know what I mean? That's a form of judgment as much as we don't want to be judged because of substance abuse concerns or anything like that. We want people to understand there's it's a, it can be a disorder, stuff like that. You are still judged. You are. There's still the terms junkie. There's still the other terms that are getting thrown around out there. So I don't, I personally don't like it. I'm not saying, you know, oh, you're a horrible person if you think that way or anything like that. I just personally don't like it. I rather wait till all the facts come out before I say that's what really happened. I don't like it. Or it's substance abuse. All Maybe right, that's so naive. Maybe I'm just too optimistic. To I don't know. World's history, if he had any substance abuse problems, there are plenty of interviews of him talking about trying to get off codeine because he really, um, you know, had his girlfriend scared. He also talks about his issues with Xanax and everything like that. So, uh, like I said, a lot of the evidence right now is leaning towards substance abuse. We're not going to know for sure until the toxicology report comes out, but I'm going to come back to that in just a little bit because even the toxicology report might not tell us if it was a substance abuse issue, and I'll explain why a little bit later, all right? So the first thing I want to dive into is why is it so hard for people to quit using drugs, to quit I can already tell you what he's going to say when he comes back to that. He's going to say he could have been 
sober. He could have been um, getting off, like he had showed an article where he said he had quit Xanax. He could have already been off of those substances, but the damage could have already been done from the usage that he had done, it, especially if it was a heavy usage. That's what he's going to tell you. I can already tell you. I already tell you. And it's true. I cannot tell you how many times I've had clients pass away because, yes, they were sober, they were clean, um, clean drug tests, everything motivated, but then a sickness happened or something else happened to where they passed away because their bodies couldn't handle it any longer. Their body was not okay. They had heard it essentially all from all the times that they had been using. I mean, that's whatever enough. their addiction is, all right? So specifically, when we're looking at Juice World. All right. And we've seen this happen to other people like uh, another rapper, Macklemore, who's been off and on with his sobriety. Right. Uh, we had a little peep die just a few years ago from his substance abuse. Why is it so difficult for people to quit? And a lot of it has to do with their environment and their identity. OK. And this isn't just rappers. All right. I want everybody Thank to you. realize this. Like I said, whether you're somebody struggling with substance abuse issues or if you have a family member or a loved one who is some of you who are in recovery, like feel free to share your experience down in the comments below. But one of the biggest issues with substance abuse is that we're afraid to get rid of it because it is woven into our identity. Right. So when you look at somebody like Juice World or other people in the music industry, it's difficult to quit because if you quit, right, if you quit, that also means that you are also leaving different friends, right, different people that you hung out with because part of your friendship might have been based on using substances. And this is part of my experience. Very true. One of the things that kept me in my addiction for almost a decade was my identity was wrapped up in it. If I quit drinking, if I quit using, if I quit partying, all these things, like who am I, right? I'm no longer the guy who's going out to the bar and snorting lines of Coke in the bathroom. You know what I mean? I'm no longer the guy who's, you know, uh, taking these pills and also hooking other people up with pills and everything like that. So there are a million different reasons why addiction is so difficult to overcome, but one of them is because of our environment and being afraid of losing that. So it's not just losing the substance, right? And why do people use substances? A lot of times is to mask some kind of pain, all right? The three primary reasons that people abuse alcohol or drugs is to get a feeling, to get rid of a feeling, or to have an escape. Right. And that's one of the reasons why I try to talk about different coping strategies on my channels, because I had to learn how to live with life on life's terms without abusing substances. You know what I mean? For a lot of people like I'd imagine, you know, Juice World and a lot of other young people like it might start out as just being the cool thing to do. Like, yo, let's let's, you know, use together or let's get messed up, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Like it might start like that. Very but true. with the way our brain works, when we start getting these negative emotions, right? Anger, sadness, anxiety, you know, all these different things. Like Feeling. our brain says, well, you know, those drugs made you feel pretty good. Why don't yeah. you use it for that? And what happens is is our brain starts associating those bad feelings with getting messed up. So pretty soon we're not just drinking and using to party, we're doing it to cope with life. And that is one of the main reasons why, you know, we need therapy. Yes. We need, sometimes we need uh, antidepressant medications, right? And I'm gonna talk about non-narcotic anti-anxiety medications in a second. We need support groups, you know, whatever it is, right? There's so many things that I have to do for my mental health on a daily basis. So and not just antidepressants. Again, that is not the only medication that's out there. Take any of your medications. Doesn't matter if you are on a substance abuse uh, or substance abuse. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're dealing with substance, um, a, a substance abuse disorder or not. If you are on medications, take your medications. That means your medical medications, your psych medications, all of them, because you're on them for a reason. So I don't go back to those substances. And as prescribed. As prescribed. Okay. So now let's talk about 
seizures and substance abuse. So here's the thing, like no matter what, when you are trying to get off a substance, get medical help. The best thing you can do is to go to a detox facility, okay? Two substances that can kill you from withdrawal are Xanax and alcohol, all right? When you're withdrawing from the Xanax and alcohol, there is a likelihood of seizures, all right? So when looking at Juice World, Facts. and looking at his struggles with substance abuse issues, when I see when it comes to substance abuse, I don't seizure, doubt that he right? understands what no he's talking about. Medical history of seizures, it's just certain it mental seems health like this stuff, was a like result mm, of withdrawal. Mm -hmm. So with Juice World traveling, it is possible that he ran out of the drugs, and this was part of withdrawal. I'm gonna give him a second because okay? there's so something else he can think of. Earlier, like, as you pay attention to this story and watch this story, and when toxicology reports come out, you might not find out that he had Xanax in his system because you can die from seizures from withdrawing from Xanax, which would mean that the drugs weren't in the system. And Xanax withdrawal can cause seizures for a long time after you quit. After you stop you using go. the substance, it can happen for weeks after. Like, personally, working in the drug and alcohol treatment center, I saw people who came in and got, um, you know, clean off Xanax, and thank God they were in our treatment center where we had nurses 24-7 and doctors and everything like that. I saw people who had, like, a seizure a week for the first month. I remember one kid who came in there um, getting off Xanax. He was sober for about a month, month and a half, and I'm just sitting there doing a group, right? I'm sitting there doing my normal group, and for some reason, right at that moment, I caught glances with this kid, and he just turned stiff as a board and fell out of his chair and started having a seizure because the withdrawal from Xanax can happen for a while after. We always have to remember, these are mind altering substances, okay? Seizures are a result of what's happening in the brain and something not working right, some misfires and everything like that. So that's how these substances can lead to having a seizure later on. And it is true, it could be something that Juice World, and that's one thing that I was thinking. That's why I don't want to push it on, oh, it's because of drugs. Technically, yes, doesn't mean it was because he was high now, doesn't mean because he was under the influence now, which is what everyone's automatically assuming. Could have been damaged from this, his past drug abuse? It definitely could have. It definitely could have. And it's and, and that's what and if it is, that's what's gonna make me even sadder because he felt the need to keep working. He had to do this. I don't know where he was going in the airport or if he was on tour or anything like that. Um, but and it's a lot of celebrities that kind of and regular people too. We don't feel like we have the time to handle our mental health or our substance abuse concerns that we might have. We feel like we have to keep going, 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 going. We have to keep um, food on the table. We have to take care of our kids. But then, like I always tell everyone, life's not guaranteed. Let's take advantage of these opportunities when we can, because it'll work out for the best no matter what. It sounds like, I, like, oh no, it's not always, no, it does. Go through the hard times sometimes to get to that reward, honestly. And that that's one thing that does make me sad because he has the resources he has. He, he might not have had the opportunity. He might have had contracts, stuff like that, to not have been properly attended to while going through this um, or making sure he's getting the proper medical care. So, but he was right. Cute. Yes. When people are With young, especially syndrome. when they're successful, like we get this idea that we're invincible. You know what I mean? We see so many people around us drinking or using or whatever. We think that this can't happen to us. Um, I've seen way too many people pass away most of the people I've i'm seen trying to see is he did he cry substance abuse issues was he crying or is it just like probably maybe, i think the majority you know, just were, regular were skin between stuff. 18 and I don't 26 know. it looks like he might have been crying old. or something like and that's so sad man that's doesn't so it sad. it looks I've like he was crying friends 24 25 years old who have passed away from this thing so i know juice world had a lot of fans out there and my suggestion is if you want to honor his memory like Try to help people, get help for yourself, whatever it is. Like I'm living proof as well as millions of other people that you can have a substance abuse problem and kick it to the curb. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're
so yeah that's his video you guys saw my reactions um he did pretty well he didn't address the prozac video which i was kind of hoping he would have thrown in there because since we're talking about drugs and taking medications and stuff like that um but he did handle it pretty well but he usually i'm not gonna lie most well okay he can be problematic but most I usually try to give him a little bit more wiggle room when it comes to, you know, the substance abuse topic since he is in recovery and um, seems like that's a topic that he really does understand, even though some of his advice is not that great, which, yeah, but I try to give him a little bit more wiggle room. He did really well. Um, like I said in the beginning, I don't like putting, um, oh, it was because of drugs. What really happened to him was, or it could have been because of his past drug use. I don't like putting that on them. I don't know. Now, if the toxicology comes out and they say there was traces of it or anything like that, then I'll be like, mm, okay, okay. You know, if you're abusing substances, try to get some help. If you need guidance on where to get help in your area, look down in my description box. I have the national hotline, mental abuse and substance abuse hotline down there. You can give them a call. So that way they can hook you up with any agencies in your area, start the referral process. Um, but other than that, it wasn't a bad video. Um, he did pretty good. I don't know if he was crying. It looked like he might have been crying. Um, if he was, maybe he was a fan. I know I cried. But you guys, let me know. What did you think? Do you think he handled the topic pretty well? Do you think that he explained stuff pretty well? Um, what do you do when it's a, when he's talking about substance abuse? Do you kind of let him go on his way because he is, you know, in recovery? Or do you still look at him like, mm? um, let me know down in the comments. I want to hear from you guys. Until then, I will go ahead and sign on out. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.